Good evening and welcome to Sunset News. My name is Ashwin Berry. In this half hour program, we'll be looking at the news, your daily dose of community talk, the story of the day, economic news, tomorrow's weather, international news, as well as sports news. Let's start off by having a look at the latest news stories. Government budgets 18 million Namibian dollars for Hosea Kutako Shrine. While the expenditure planned for the construction of the Hosea Kutako Shrine and Memorial Homestead has been welcomed, questions, however, have been asked about the timing of the financing of the project. Government budgeted 18 million Namibian dollars for its construction for the 2022-23 fiscal year, while a further 7 million Namibian dollars has been earmarked for the 2023-24 fiscal year and 8 million Namibian dollars for the 2024-25 fiscal year. National Unity Democratic Movement Secretary General Joseph Kawandenge welcomed the expenditure but felt it ought to have been paused in light of the economic situation that Namibia currently finds itself in. Several City of Vindu councillors who do not sit on the management committee on Wednesday night took a hard-line stance not to discuss employee grievance matters at council level until the disciplinary process of the municipality's legal head, Ben Gairorue, is reinstituted. The management committee said last month took a decision to halt a disciplinary process instituted against Gairorue, who has been under fire for, or for some years over alleged gross misconduct dishonesty and gross negligence over the 5G saga. The move was questioned by Municipal Insider, who felt MC was usurping the powers of the executive. Now, Anna Grechishishkna, a Ukrainian who has been traveling around the world on her motorbike, is currently on her second visit to Namibia. She talks about the war in her country, the devastation, and how the war has shattered her dream of returning to Ukraine with the Guinness World Record for the longest solo ride by a female. Um, hi to everyone. Uh, my name is Anna Grichishkina, and as you can understand, with the flag behind me, I'm Ukrainian. And uh, um, I'm very proud to be Ukrainian. Also, I want to say a few things to Ukrainians who are listening to me now. My people, I'm, I cannot even start expressing myself how proud I am of you, really. As I said, I haven't been in Ukraine for some time, but uh, Ukraine is always in my heart, and you are always in my heart. And you are, we are a strong nation, passionate nation. We have our values, we have our dignity, we have our values of freedom, of honesty, and let's just continue being like this. Um, I know that we are not perfect people, we have our own problems, but what we also have is, uh, is our dignity, is our passion, is our love for freedom and for our country. I think that this nation, our nation, is just unbeatable. Slava Ukraini! Glory to Ukraine. Now, the groundbreaking ceremony for the Indigenous People's Business Forum, Avis Smart Village Development, took place in Avis in Vindok today. Here, the Deputy Minister of Industrialization and Trade, Verna Sinimbo, and the Chairman of the IPBF, Albin Ilovu, cut the ribbon before Vindok East Constituency Councillor Brian Black joins her with the spades to ceremonially move the earth for this construction. Phase 1 includes 38 freestanding houses and 8 general residential plots, of which 8 percent have already been sold since marketing started in November Gentlemen, as we are winding up uh, the formal part of our program, please feel free to join us um, after this. Uh, with 
In the next story, a German-speaking Swakopmund father who was accused of having raped his five-year-old biological daughter is a free man. The case of rape was withdrawn in the Swakopmund Regional Court on Monday. In her ruling, Magistrate Gaynor Polton said that on request of the state, the matter be withdrawn due to the complainant struggling to speak out. The father was in police custody since his arrest in December 2020. Namibia currently imports 96% of its fruit, mainly from South Africa. Emily Abraham of the Namibian Agricultural Board has consequently encouraged local farmers to invest in fruit production. The remaining 4% consists mainly of citrus, mangoes and grapes grown locally. NAB is planning a fruit development program to increase fruit production in the country. The program will assist farmers entering fruit production by providing them with high quality planting material. That brings us to the end of our top stories. Now, Margaret J. Whitley once said, there is no power for change greater than a community discovering what it cares about. So keeping that in mind, we'll be bringing you community talk after the break. Now, in community talk, entrepreneur Verena Gomono chats to Yolanda now about why reusable pads can help keep girls in school. We've also added a clip of how to make your own reusable pads. Uh, my business name is Laverne Sanitary Manufacturing. We, what we do, we manufacture reusable cloth pads, which you can use and wash and reuse again. Why is it so important to have a product like this available for Namibians? It's very important because um, according to the official statistics, um, currently we are standing at 36% of school girls who are um, missing schools because they do not have um, sanitary products. And not only that, even 78% um, of women from rural areas are still don't have access to sanitary products. So it's really important because we need to keep our girls in school, we need to keep our women um, to live a life that is really um, life of dignity per se, because imagine somebody having periods and they, they are using uh, dirty stuff to, to prevent blood leaks. <laughs> Important. Now, gale force winds descended upon Epako High School recently. We'll be getting an update on that situation in our story of the day after the break. Choose your flex package with Paratus today. Sign up for ultra fast fiber with the convenience of mobile LTE. That's two products in one bundle. It's new, it's one bill, and you can stay connected in more than one location. For more information, visit paratus.africa forward slash NA.
In your story of the day, Yolanda Nell traveled to Hobabis, where she visited Epako High School. Here she gives an update of the current situation at the school after the hostel roof was blown off by gale force winds earlier this week. Weather conditions might have been the cause for the roof to collapse at the Ipaku Boys Hostel in Khubabas, but the 40-year-old building is in desperate need of an overall upgrade with water damage that can clearly be seen at the walls and broken cement slabs in the corridor. Even the mattresses and beds need to be replaced, and many a broken door was noticed. This hostel is home to 120 boys, all which has been sent home while they are busy fixing the roof. According to the chief matron Rosalia, this is going to take months to finish. Maintenance work for the rest of the building might take years, but she doubt there will be funding to start with this endeavor. A contractor needs to still be appointed to start with the repairs, but no one has an idea when this will happen, not even after it was classified as a matter of emergency. Prisoners of the Hubabas Correctional Facility is currently cleaning up and removing the roof before repair work will start. Despite the hostel currently not being able to provide accommodation to the 127 students, they still get all their meals. Rosalia explains that parents pay a term fee and not a monthly fee to go to the hostel. She said that they still want to provide for their students even during these troubling times. She is happy to announce that the parents of these boys have already taken hands with them and that all kids are still attending school. Students lost most of their belongings, including school books that got soaked in the rain. Luckily, no one was injured. Rosalia said that no one knows if there would be funding available to do the repair work, let alone other maintenance needs, and that she hopes that donors can get involved to fix this problem as soon as possible. Now, after the break in economic news, we will delve into how the Russia-Ukraine unrest is impacting the local market. Stay with us. If you're feeling I'm feeling and you know I won't stop, all you gotta do is take our love to the top. If I got it and you want it and you'll never let it drop, all we gotta do is take our love to the top. I will ride for you, baby, even die for him. When I'm loving you, but my heart don't stop. We can prevent violence against women before it happens. It means tackling the root causes of violence, working with men and boys to end power over women, which is often normalized and justified. Transforming these root causes and preventing violence needs political commitment and leadership, laws and policies that promote gender equality, investments in women's organizations and resources for prevention work. But prevention also starts with you. You can start by educating yourself. Speak out when you get a chance. Advocate for survivors' rights and always listen to survivors. Preventing violence against women and girls before it actually happens is the most effective way of ending it. So let's start now. Now, the immediate global implications of the Russia-Ukraine unrest will be higher inflation, lower growth, and some disruption to financial markets as deeper sanctions take hold. The longer-term fallout will be a further debilitation of the system of globalized supply chains and integrated financial markets that has dominated the world economy. The pandemic has left the world economy with two key points of vulnerability, high inflation and nervous financial markets. Aftershocks from the invasion could easily worsen the situation. Hence, the unrest will likely drive up the already high cost of living in the world, rattle investment and slow down the economic recovery, analyst Joseph Shehama said. 
Let's get into your economic indicators. The Namibian dollar is up against all major currencies but down next to the Chinese yuan. First Rand Namibia stock is up 0.01% while MTC holds its ground at 8.24 points. The local index closed with a 0.03% uptick as the overall index dipped by 0.54%. All commodities are up with the biggest surge being made by Brent crude oil at 7.1%. Now it seems like the rain is making its way back, starting with a few towns in Namibia. More in your weather forecast after the break. Thank you for staying with Sunset News. Let's get into your weather. Some rain and thunderstorms can be expected in Katima and Rundu respectively as Vinduk holds on to the heat with a maximum of 28 degrees. Expect partly cloudy conditions in Swakomund and Hentis Bay with a maximum of 20 degrees for both towns while Orangimund can expect some rains with a maximum of 23 degrees expected. Now, Ukraine's second city is being heavily bombed as UN Assembly denounces Russia. More on this in international news after these messages. Now in international news, Ukraine's second biggest city, Kharkiv, suffered heavy bombardment on Wednesday as Russia's week-long invasion was denounced by the United Nations in a historic vote and dozens of countries referred Moscow to be probed for potential war crimes. The biggest attack on a European state since 1945 has caused over 870,000 people to flee, led to a barrage of economic measures against Russia and stoked fears of wider conflict in the West, unthought for decades. For Russians, the fallout has included queues outside banks, a plunge in the value of the ruble, and an exodus of international firms. As sanctions have tightened, Russian billionaires are moving their super yachts, and the owner of Chelsea sold the soccer club. In Ukraine, the human toll was mounting in Kharkiv, a city of 1.5 million people, where bombing has left its center a wasteland of ruined buildings and debris. A United Nations resolution reprimanding Moscow was supported by 141 of the Assembly's 193 members, passed in a rare emergency session, a symbolic victory for Ukraine that increases Moscow's international isolation. Reuters reports. Completely destroyed. Russia stepped up its lethal bombardment of major Ukrainian cities on Wednesday, which it failed to capture. The eastern city of Kharkiv has experienced the most intensive shelling across the country, its sendings and debris. <laughs> Russian forces fired a cruise missile into the city council building, according to the region's deputy governor, and footage shows a police department engulfed in flames following a Russian strike. This man said he saw multiple bodies on the ground after a residential building was bombed. Also on Wednesday, Moscow claimed it had captured its first sizable city, Kherson. But Ukraine disputes this and says they are fighting on in the provincial capital. Ukraine's capital city, Kiev, a city of three million people, has held out in the face of increasingly heavy shelling. Though Western governments say a huge armoured column stretched for miles along the road to Kiev has been largely frozen in place for days. 
On Tuesday, Russia blasted the main television tower near a Holocaust memorial, killing bystanders and causing heavy damage to several shops. With Moscow having failed in its aim of swiftly overthrowing Ukraine's government after nearly a week, Western countries are worried that it's switching to new, far more violent tactics to blast its way into cities it had expected to easily take. Russia said it had sent delegates for a second round of peace talks in Belarus near the border. But speaking to Reuters, Ukraine's president Volodymyr Zelensky said Russia needed to stop bombing if it wanted to negotiate peace. We are for dialogue, yes, but the least that must happen is the bombardment of people must stop. You simply have to stop the bombardment and then sit down behind the table for talks. Putin ordered what he calls a special military operation last Thursday in a bid to disarm Ukraine and capture what Russia regards as dangerous nationalists. Ukraine seeks closer ties with the West, which Russia calls a threat. We will certainly be keeping an eye on the developments in that region. Now, from horse racing and wrestling to a new stadium, your sports news updates will be coming to you right after the break. Let's get into your sports news stories. The Epokiro and Okahanja horse racing clubs are jointly hosting a horse racing competition on 26 March at Okahanja. The event will see horses competing in Nambred Beginner, Nambred Maiden, Nambred Graduation, D Division and A Division Thoroughbred Divisions. One of the organizers, Irishua Murangi, is inviting horse owners to register their horses in what is expected to be a fast and furious battle of some of the top race horses. The event will also be used to promote the well-being of race jockeys. Now, the Namibia Wrestling Federation this week announced the appointment of new executive members. The members who were selected at the Federation's annual general meeting last month will head and manage the board for the next four years. The EXCO members comprise of President Patrick Muir, Vice President Gabriel Gurirab, Secretary General Rosanne van der Merwe, and Assistant Secretary General Johannes Homateni, Treasurer Almerie van der Merwe, and Technical uh, Director Stephen Leroux, and Chief Coach Charles van der Merwe. Never. Sports Minister Agnes Shongarero has revealed the documentation process to revamp the dilapidated independent stadium and it has begun with the ministry still deliberating on dates and processes involving the tendering for the renovation. This after government availed 50 million Namibian dollars from the national budget towards the renovation of the stadium. This has been Sunset News, your highlights after the break. Now, in your highlights, Anna Grichishkina, a Ukrainian who has been traveling around the world on her motorbike, is currently on her second visit to Namibia. She talked about the war in her country, the devastation, and how the war has shattered her dream of returning to Ukraine with the Guinness World Record for the longest solo ride by a female. 
Several City of Vindu councillors who do not sit on the management committee on Wednesday night took a hard-line stance not to discuss employee grievance matters at council level until the disciplinary process of the municipality's legal head Ben Ngairorue is reinstituted. The management committee last month took a decision to halt all disciplinary processes instituted against Ngairorue, who has been under fire for years for alleged gross misconduct, dishonesty and gross negligence over the 5G saga. And Namibia currently imports 96% of its fruit, mainly from South Africa. Emily Abraham of the Namibian Agricultural Board has consequently encouraged local farmers to invest in fruit production. The remaining 4% consists mainly of citrus, mangoes and grapes grown locally. Thank you for watching today's show. Make sure you join us on Facebook and on all the NMH platforms, as well as our website, oneup2.com. Sunset News broadcasts daily on DSTV Channel 285 and GoTV Channel 94 from 7.30 to 8, bringing you the latest news stories from Namibia and the world. My name is Ashwin Berry. This is Sunset News. Don't end your day without us.